let's start at the beginning with a, a definition of convention of of genocide and this appears in the uh, convention um, on prevention and punishment of the crime of genocide it was adopted by the united nations in 1948 as general assembly resolution 260 and it came into force in 1951 it defines genocide in legal terms and was the culmination of work by a man called lemkin who had been through the war and was very keen to bring some kind of legal judgment to the behavior that was exhibited during world war ii so that's where we start when people throw the word genocide it loses a lot of its specific meaning when it becomes uh, involved in politics. I've, I've looked at this matter in some detail. I've written a long article about China and the Uyghurs in which I've examined the evidence put out by Adrian Zenz and by other people. I've uh, reviewed the attitude of Jewish people towards genocide in relation to the Nazis when six million Jews died in the last world war and their attitude towards the Uyghur issue as well so it's wide-ranging it's comprehensive and I came to the conclusion there is no genocide the United Nations Human Rights Council um, no the International Criminal Court they stated when they were approached that they declined to take action against China on the basis of not having jurisdiction over China for most of the alleged crimes. Uh, they, they also said uh, that they hadn't seen enough evidence. It wasn't just a question of jurisdiction, but they said they had seen insufficient evidence to show that genocide had happened. Then you come to another organization, which is the US State Department, which is very interesting. The US State Department's Office of Legal Advice concluded that there was insufficient evidence to prove genocide. Thereafter, there have been motions passed in the British Parliament and in the Dutch Parliament, New Zealand Parliament as well, saying, recognizing China's actions as genocide. So, if you look at the politics, you will find that parliamentarians in different countries have come under pressure and have reached a conclusion that China is guilty of genocide. So why hasn't a court made a decision? So we're back to looking at evidence. That is the key thing, Lucien. What is the evidence of genocide? And when you begin to look at the evidence relied upon by people who allege there is genocide for example the legal group in london who made and gave an opinion on the existence of genocide the essex court chambers group who've got themselves into a bit of a mess because they published a document which said there was genocide when you look at their document and analyze their linkage on evidence it really is very thin very poorly in my opinion i've read their judgment i know the story of it they all rely on the figure of a million uyghurs incarcerated in prisons but when you press that you find i'll just tell you my view about that because blumenthal in gray zone exposed this very well when they spoke to the head of the World Uyghur Congress and said, where do you get the figure of one million Uyghurs in custody? And he replied, it's not our figure, it comes from America. Remember, Lucien, this is a genocide without a murder, without deaths, without crematorium, without execution squads, without refugees, without uh, uh, streams of people running away from Uyghur, from uh, 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 Xinjiang, seeking safety outside. All of the people whose evidence has now been presented by Mahmoud of the World Uyghur Congress is by people who were allowed to leave China without difficulty. It doesn't make sense. 
and I think it reflects the change in world politics that has occurred in the last 20 years or so. The background to this is a recognition that the Chinese economy has trebled since 2007. China is shortly to become the largest economy in the world, and the Americans cannot accept it. When I researched it, it became apparent to me that the violence which has existed in Xinjiang, of which there is no doubt it has occurred, there is a, 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 an issue in Xinjiang with the extremists, with the fundamentalists, um, with the I I I I ISIS supporters, we have them in this country as well. Here in the UK, we're dealing with two recent events. One was the bombing in Manchester, when I'm not sure the number, was it 39 people were killed by a bomb that was left by ISIS extremists? And more recently, there were actual killings with knives and guns uh, on London Bridge in the center of London. The problem of Uyghur extremism is a problem that affects many Islamic countries. And that's one of the reasons why you will not see any Islamic countries jumping on the bandwagon and accusing China of genocide. Why? Because the enemy of the Islamic governments is the same as the enemy of the Xinjiang Autonomous Region and is the same as the enemy of the British government who are always alert to the possibility that there may well be more uh, terrorist outrages in London. China has to try and deal with it in the best way possible. And that's not easily done, I have to say, Lucien. I see the publicity, I see the material that comes out of China, and I ask myself the question, is there maybe another way in which China can attack people who claim that they continue to be guilty of genocide? That's a question of tactics of political activity. But it does rise, arise in my mind as to whether the rebuttals, very good rebuttals that come out of the Xinjiang press conferences, full of detail and interviews, is enough to withstand the uh, torrent of bad publicity that China receives on this particular issue. Uh, the general range of people called upon to comment on the latest issues in relation to genocide in Xinjiang are all anti-China. Now, I am trying to get my voice heard. But generally speaking, it's taking me time personally to make a breakthrough. You know, if you're interested in democracy, you have to be interested in listening to two sides of the same argument. You can't always be one-sided. And the media in the UK is basically very one-sided. When they put in a lot of information about China, about uh, adverse information about Xinjiang, about the Uyghurs, they then put in a two-line comment, China has issued a statement denying these allegations, et cetera, et cetera, but no further information. I'm working on it, believe me, I'm very keen to get my views known, not because it's me, but because I think it's right for the international debate that more people should have their eyes opened about what is going on in Xinjiang and what is the proper geopolitical setting. 